Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix channel. This is Moshix and today we're going to be looking at uh, yet one more uh, exotic uh, mainframe operating system. Um, as exotic I would define all mainframe operating systems of the 60s, 70s and 80s other than MVS, DOS, VS and VM, basically the, the IBM mainframe operating systems. Uh, we looked in the past, uh, in the last video, we looked at the uh, music uh, SP operating system and I just showed how to install it because I couldn't figure out how to do much more than that. One of the readers, uh, one of the viewers posted some comments on how to get uh, BASIC to work. So apparently the BASIC compiler was installed in, uh, in the music SP distribution that uh, we looked at. And today we're going to be looking at the Michigan Terminal System, MTS. Um, and MTS is a very interesting operating system because it was designed from the scratch up just like Music SP to be a time sharing system. Um, whereas the music was uh, designed and developed at McGill University, uh, the Michigan Terminal System was developed at the University of Michigan. Um, and um, it was uh, developed in the late 60s, I think in 68. Um, I don't see here any mention of uh, more specific uh, dates, but I know it was 1968. Um, just like uh, many of the other mainframe operating systems of the time, you would have things like Algo running on it, uh, Fortune obviously, Fortune is, was always a must on the mainframe, uh, PL1, the same PL1F compiler that we used to have, uh, uh, that we have on MBS. Uh, uh, Snowball, Rat4, Flex, um, Lisp, interestingly, and MAD, which was the, the assembler for, like a Fortran kind of assembler for the mainframe, especially for the 7094 uh, mainframe that came just before the S360, basic. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, there was also a COBOL compiler for it, but it's not listed here. Um, but anyway, so uh, it had uh, a very nice following, MTS. Uh, I think that the last uh, website, the last site to get off MTS was, I think, in 1995. So it was running for uh, a while. The other interesting fact is that the Michigan Terminal System from the beginning was developed for virtual memory. So it kind of came together with the IBM uh, S360 model 67 and the, uh, oh, actually it's listed here. The IBM S360 model 67 was a seminal mainframe because it was the first model of IBM mainframes which had a, um, a, a, a an address translation um, capability. IBM added that on the request of the, um, of MIT, um, at MIT at the time, uh, wanted to do time sharing under Professor uh, Fano, I think, um, and um, and so they started. They developed the direct address translation capability as an add-on, uh, basically just developing the chipset. And IBM for a while would uh, accept special orders of that DAT box, as they used to call it, which was like a real huge box added to the mainframe with wiring um, to do address translation, which enables virtual memory. Not only address translation, I should say, but also memory protection, which is which goes kind of hand in hand with virtual memory because you don't want one address space to ruin the memory of another address space. So the two things go together. And um, and it is, it is an important model because VM uh, was developed in it. First, it was called uh, uh, VM uh, CP40 because there was a slightly earlier model of that which was the S360 model 40 in which they added one address translation but it wasn't compatible with the one they added on the 67 and then they rewrote uh, CP uh, CP67 and I started to gather a huge following in the mid 60s and, and late 60s and then IBM called it VM uh, 370 and released, this, uh, released it as a as a as a service product, um, and um, and so uh, with this model, um, 
all the modern operating systems developed and and mvs itself by the way mvs itself used the same address translation and virtual memory model that was present in this model and then ibm when they first announced the first ibm s370 they did not announce it with virtual memory but uh, in 72 but uh oh, sorry in 1970 when they announced the s370 did have, not have a virtual memory support but two years later in 1972 they did announce virtual memory support um, and and that's also when they released uh, virtual memory support for MVS with MVT and the VM370 later on DOS, DOS VS um, so but today we're going to be looking at uh, the Michigan, Michigan terminal system um, there's a nice picture here somewhere that shows how this looks on a on a monitor well apparently not here uh, this is the official website for the MTS system. I think it's a very poorly designed website. Uh, they keep saying where to download um, MTS, but then <laughs> every place you go to just keep saying that you can download MVS and you never get to download uh, these links here. They're, they're very bad. Um, so you, I mean, it's supposed to find here a downloadable, but every time you click on something, it just goes somewhere else. Uh, but I found a way to download it. And I did get MTS installed about four years ago on one of my computers, but I have almost no recollection of that. And so today it's going to be almost like doing it from scratch. Um, and let's get um, to get to do it together today. So the first thing uh, is I have a new uh, VM here, which I called uh, MTS. It's a brand new Ubuntu installation. There's nothing in here. Uh, so let's start with installing Hercules apt install ah, can I type tonight it's a little late it's 1 a.m. I'm still jet lag and I'm just about to um, set off to Europe again so this, I'm gonna be jet lag for the next couple of weeks so uh, Hercules is installed we also need uh, uh, the command line um, uh, terminal I guess Okay, so that's uh, working. Start a screen session, and I did get a download of um, of MTS. Where is it? Here it is. Uh, let's see how to get this onto the system. What's the IP address here? Oops, that window's a little bit too small. I have big fonts enabled here, so you can all see this on your tiny little iPhones and, and Samsung devices. So that's uh, 94, okay. So uh, I would say we start uh, win SCP. Oh, one more thing here is that we need to, um, this is a brand new installation. Uh, let's enable, don't do this on a real production server but uh, that's what I do here. Sorry guys, I know that I'll have the security police um, start screaming on me in the comments, um, but that's just the way I roll. Um, a service, restart. Okay, now let's transfer that uh, installation over there. Win SCP. I could do this for the command line, but I'm a little bit too lazy tonight. Was it 94? Okay, let's see if we can log in. Yes, we can. Okay. Uh, where are the downloads here? And where is the D? Okay, here's the distribution. Uh, root. I have a very slow network at home for a very simple reason, and that is that um, unfortunately, oh, unfortunately, the home is quite big and I don't have Ethernet wiring in the whole house. And the way I do networking is I do Ethernet over uh, power with those um, Netgear devices that you can plug into power outlets. And while it does kind of work most of the time, um, it is it is of course slow uh, that's but I use uh, virtual memory machines running in the in my little data center here by the way I obtained a new server just uh, two days ago 
which is an ML350 um, version uh, generation 9 with six CPUs and uh, about, I don't know, 64 or 128 gigabyte of RAM. Um, and it only, it can host two CPU sockets, but only one is populated, but it's quite fast. It has DD4, uh, DDR4 memory, a very fast uh, IO bus on the, on the disks. And I have a bunch of SSD disks. So it's a very fast system. I also have, if you remember, my um my uh um hp 580 uh generation 7 with about 80 cpus this one only has about i think 12 cpus but this one has 80 and 512 gigabytes of ram but uh the big server um uses needs about 700 watts of power uh, and so it's 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 about i would say uh, two or three dollars a day to run it um, down here in Texas whilst this only uses about 85 watts so this only uses about 30 40 cents a day and I can and so this is my machine that's going to be always on it's a this is a tower it's not a it's not a rack mountable server um, so um, I, I only turn the big fatso machine on when I need it this one is my daily go-to machine and, and this is where we're going to be running MTS on. Um, so let's see where we are here. Oh my God, this is very slow. Um, okay, I spared you uh, watching this upload. It took a good three, four minutes. So I paused it and we're back here now again. So it's uploaded. So uh, let's go see what we're going to do with this uh, MTS thing. Um, okay, um, let's gun zip this bad boy uh, and it's it's not a small file I think it's about three six hundred megabytes and so this is working now to gun zip it okay um, let's untar it you could of course untar and gun zip all at the same time but I like to do in separate steps to see if there's any uh, gzip uh, problems all right, so we got this done. Um, MTS. Uh, here is this guy. Hmm. Okay. So there's a bunch of tapes. All these AWSs are tapes. And hmm. Yeah. Let's see how we get this thing to run. Uh, That's why this is such a bad website. It's just, it looks very, you know, university style, but, but a lot of text, but they don't really say anything. Uh, here is a, okay, here is a Hercules file. Okay, this seems kind of to go together with the A. Um, with the tapes uh, devices that we saw here if you see that um, but where are the discs tapes we're not gonna run this thing off tapes I mean we could so where are the discs oh here's one disk device so this is this all goes to one disk device whatever um yeah i mean this is something that i've noticed before it's poorly conceived um they're mts people they're not hercules people quite obviously and um it does mention here somewhere that there is they have a better yeah so i mean this da zip archive Contents, but where do I get this DZ archive content? This is not the one. Ever, uh... So it's a bit savers. Um, bit savers. MTS. So that's um, that's why this whole thing is a little difficult. Um, yeah. Parent directory. 
you have to go kind of software archive, you have to go find it. Let's see if we can find Michigan. MTS. This is as poorly organized as the MTS website. Sorry folks, I'm just, I'm just going through the process you would go through so you can cut through the chase and, and get it up and running. So I guess we have to go with IBM first. Uh, where is IBM? International Business Machines. It's not even here. There's no international. Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, 360. Nope. Food savers. And here's this tradition. I, I can't see where this thing is. Now oh, now there's yet another website. Um University Computing Center. No, I really can't. MTS distribution. Okay. What this all is, nobody knows. Why do they have... Copy link address. And um, wget... Sorry, wget... This is going to take another while. Uh, that is indeed the problem with the MDS folks. Uh, you guys need to get organized and um, and and get your stuff to work. Uh, you can't just link endlessly to a website that look great and look like you have a lot of content, but then you can't find stuff. Uh, look at how the MV, uh, the VM three seventy people get organized. Look at TK four look at uh, even as music SP um, look at all these people uh, in the VM for uh, DOS VS out there they make it easy whereas you just link back and forth people um, what the hell so um, visual documentation I mean this is just a mess and this is the second time I'm downloading stuff and I don't really know what the difference is and what is the difference between this and this? In the meantime, let's go here. Now I start to remember that it was indeed very hard four years ago. And I see that in four years, um, nothing really happened. Okay, let's go find this. Um, Hercules config file again. It looks beautiful, but why make it so big? And then my end is needed. Okay. In the right place, yes, I know. I also need to create a 3380 device. Okay, that's done. We just created the 3380 device. Um, in general, the request device needs to match at least a subset. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, 128 megabyte, megabytes of RAM, no CPUs. I wonder if it supports more than one CPU. 
um, console port 3270 got that uh, well, uncomment this line if you want the definition to match the definition of the version of tables why wouldn't I want it to match whatever in record devices printer options let's just remove all this stuff okay shadow files I don't like working shadow files okay uh, support single density but not double density or triple density you need to be initialized using this option to the other devices I already said that could be defined here okay um, let's see if we can get this thing up and running while we wait for the other download. Oh, MTS. Let's see what we have here. Okay. Okay. So, where do we IPL from? Let's see what this says. Mm, myths I don't really care about, discussions. Yeah, this is how MTS looks like once it's... Okay. Ready to boot, booting the system for the first time, which means IPL. Okay. IPL 260. That wasn't so hard. IPL 260. Invalid. Why is that invalid? Because that device probably doesn't exist. Let's see here. Two. Of course not. We don't have any 260 devices because this is just an empty disk. Uh. just downloaded the wrong archive. What we need is Hercules, thermal emulator, and the distribution. On the top left, download on the top left. There's no download on the top left. once more okay this link does of course also now work why would it So, we're going to be uploading stuff again, once more. This is painful. 
but it looks like we've finally arrived at a place that has a distribution that works. Uh, but it's big, it's 70 or 80, well, 80 megabytes, and we're going at about 100 uh, kilobyte a second. Um, so I'll pause here again and we'll meet you once this is done. All right, folks, so I finished uh, downloading it and I'm uploading it now to my server instance here. By the way, uh, people, if this is all going a bit too fast, just freeze the screen and see exactly where it is I'm going. Now, this is a very confusing, but you should be landing at the drive Google um, from, I guess, from here. If you if you press here, you eventually will end up at this Google Drive uh, where the image is. And I think this is the right image, if I remember correctly, from four years ago. Uh, so this is where you want to be. Um, so I uploaded this now on the server and uh, let's close Win SCP here and let's close this as well. Let's make this a bigger window and let's see what we got. Uh, okay, uh, not much. Okay, let's copy this into Moshix and let's rename uh, Moshix into MTS good. Oh, move on. Oh, that was stupid of me. MTS good. MTS good. Let's go in here. Let's remove this open thing. I don't know what that is. And uh, unzip this thing. I don't have an unzip install. This is a brand new. I don't know why Ubuntu installs without unzip. I mean, what are they thinking? Uh, so, unzip. Get this done. Okay, at least this goes fast. Uh, unzip. Okay, we got something. Somebody was using a Mac. That's a giveaway that somebody is working on a Mac. Um, okay. Uh, the. Okay, here we have a Hercules info. Somebody had this working on Hercules. Let's go. Open this up. Yeah, this looks familiar from before. The only difference is that this should actually work. And I see that somebody followed expand size. Oh, main size. Why is this moved down here? Uh, this doesn't look good. Okay, and let's copy also. So now we can split. Okay. Uh, yeah. Support different printer. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, no, this is all good. Gonna leave it like this. Discs. Well, the only thing is we have to make sure if that disc is in there. Okay. Um, let's, yes it is, and the shadow file is here as well. Okay, so this looks like this should actually IPL. Um, making some progress here, folks. I uh, right, again, I do, what? No such file or directory. What the hell? There's only one tape in here. Oh, I guess it, there's only one tape because this is post installation of D6 from the tape distribution tapes onto the uh, DASTA device, the 3380. So I think we can probably let this slide. Um, okay. Okay, so we got this up and running. Um, where is device 260? Well, we have to call device 260. Not in configuration. What the hell? Why is this not in configuration? It is here. I don't understand. Is this a... I 
Ah, Speller. Somebody's been working a little bit with Windows, a little bit with, with Mac, okay. Got you figured out, so um, I'm gonna change this to lower cap. That's what happens when you switch machines all the time. It's not like I, it wouldn't happen to me, but I'm much more aware about capitalization. Okay. Okay, this should work now. Hercules. Okay. Yeah, I know that the purists among you will say there's no need to say Hercules minus F if the file is called Hercules. You can just say Hercules. Um, I know. And let's try to IPL. Oh, I need to connect the console again. IPL 260. And lo and behold, it is now running. Okay. Do you want the current system? <laughs> Uh, sure. Uh, yes, I do want the current system. I don't want an outdated system. Uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, um, we need to go back to this website. Yeah, update the Hercules file, ready to boot, and booting the system for the first time. Um, start localhost. We did that. Um, Form of ice option. Boot from an emulated disk for records IPL 260. Is it, you want what do we what do we say here? Okay, type yes. Yes. Um, and then peer warning about difference uh, since the last boot in time. Enter OK. Um, Okay. Okay, 390 VM. Enter initials and reason for reloading. Um, enter initials. More shakes. Initials, uh, a reason for reloading because I ran, ran out of bullets. That's why I need to reload. Okay, just cancel after you have checked the offline devices. What do I say now? Contents of IPL file, so it's continuing IPLing, that's interesting. Um, post IPL system successfully loaded, now 1 through 6 is complete. Compatch into the time zone, oh, there's more stuff happening. Let's see the speed of this thing. It's running a good 8 MIPS. Would be a low end uh, 30 3090 in fact um i did work on a 3090 just very briefly for maybe a month or two where the place i was working at the time in the military they upgraded from a i think a 3083 to a 3090 200 and i did touch a 3090 machine beautiful machine a giant um i i was very very impressed okay so this uh, so far peak initialization complete uh, you do not have uh, the pencil press PA2 and I never remember what is PA2 uh, yeah PA2 okay PA2 twice okay control oh no Okay, oh, it's uh, still going on. So we need to press, okay. And I think again, he says, pencil, where to find this depends on the emulator. If it worked, the message will appear canceled. No, it did not work.
How's I do PA1? I know that um, clear is control alt C. Let's try this control two. Why is this not working? Can figure out. Oh, let me let me stop here and try to figure out where PA2 is. Um, okay, then back. I couldn't find how to get this to work, so unfortunately, I need to uh, stop this um, uh, installation and use a real terminal because the, the the command line terminal. I can figure out how to put press PA2, so we'll have to unfortunately stop it here. Uh, restart it and then use a real terminal um, to get this to run. Okay. Um, yes. Uh, MS. Time for reload, a uh, reason for reloading. All my bullets. Okay. And this is now coming up. And we can make this a little smaller. So we can oh, 50 MIPS. So that would be actually be a, a bigger mainframe. Okay. And we need to wait for the peak message, whatever that is. And in the meantime, let's look at the keyboard. Uh, keyboard edit. Okay. So let's do shift. It was going to be uh, shift and the uh, apostrophe. It's going to be PA1. And control is going to be PA2. Okay. So now we need to press control. Okay, so that kind of works. And all these messages, by the way, have some kind of meaning um, about paging and other stuff. But um, initialization is complete. Yeah, so that worked. Um, start the batch schedule and user terminals. Type hasp. Hasp is probably the spooler, just like the Jest 2. And in fact, you know, if you remember the video I just released, uh, I guess three, four days ago, has stands for Houston Automatic Spool Program. Um, and that's where um, the name comes from. And I, they just named it the same. Um, and start have type hasp to start the batch schedule and then MTS hasp. Okay. Enter MTS request, MTS dollar h uh, uh asterisk hsp okay have start january 2012 start the second terminal okay start a new session that's the beauty about the tn3270 it's meant for system programmers um and mts less mts Last, let's see what this does. Ooh. That's nice. We got MTS up, folks. It's been four years since I did this. Uh, forgot everything. Yes, I have the user terminal to the left of the operator console, ready to use. Um, let's move to the next section. Sign on to MTS. 
Okay, so this is the console. Uh, we're going to be looking at this. There are no available telnet connections. Um, CLK, whatever, line configuration. So now let's see how to use this, uh, this thing. Let's have the sessions here. And the website here. Okay, so um, go here. Sign on ST01 and the password. The password is ST01. There's been an attempt to guess the password of this user since the last yeah yeah okay good we we'll set the regular IDs ST01 through ST09 and the password is the same as the user ID shared IDs with great as MTS password art artworks I remember this the system will then prompt for a secondary sign on with ID which you should enter on the regular side it's just and and it's password okay. Okay, so once we're in, okay, let's create a file, dollar create, okay, dollar create more shakes, mm, sorry, create more shakes. Yes. Okay. Are not case sensitive. Okay. You can also leave with the dollar sign when typing MTS commands. Yes, I will do that. Um, copy source to alpha. Okay. Uh, copy source to more sheets. Hello, YouTube Moshiks mainframe channel. And keep coming back for more great vids. And end file. Okay. Uh, list Moshiks. Wow. So that seems to work. Um, show information about files, similar to the file status. Okay, file status. We have one file. Um, typing F5 will also do this. Okay, let's see what else. Getting help. There is a help. Oh, very good. Three MTS commands. Very good. So these are the commands. Interesting. What is 31? Merit computer. Oh yeah, there used to be a network of all the universities in the north of the US. Um, to leave help mode. Quit. Okay. We're out of the health facility. <clears throat> I would like to <coughs> see how to get stuff to compile. MTS, compile, compilers. That's it. Okay, so all these compilers exist. I still see no COBOL compiler. Uh, okay, so there is... Uh, I would probably not look at this unless I'm especially interested in... C89 does not work. Overdrive, Snowstorm, Tangle. So let's see how to run BASIC. We do have BASIC, do we? No, we don't. Uh, PL3, PL1, 
one. There's no PL1 either. BCPL, which is the predecessor of, it's not the grandfather, it's the direct. Uh, no, actually, it's right. Uh, before C, we had B, and before B, we had BCPL. And before BCPL, we had PL1, and before PL1, we had Algol and Fortran and COBOL. Um, but COBOL is actually available. So let's see here. COBOL U. Yeah, so the COBOL is installed, APL is installed. I don't see PL1, unfortunately. Uh, yeah, they remove PL1. PL1, the optimizer compiler was installed and for a while was available, but then they removed it. Um, love to show how to work with COBOL because as far as having something compiled without errors, but I figured out how to run it. My latest attempt looks like this. Destroy load, run, COBOL U, S cards, hello COBOL. Okay, so this will be the command to run. Um, run, COBOL U, S cards, equals moshix. Let's see if this throws some errors. Yes. Oh, fantastic. Oh, I love this. Um, MTS anti COBOL, which I think is the same COBOL we have in MBS, but it's beautiful to see this running. Amazing. Yeah, of course, this will campaign because it's not a COBOL program. Um, fantastic. Love it. Uh, let's see if we can get a tiny little. Is there no basic? Mm, no, there's no basic compiler. XPL. Um, yeah. Well, I have some XPL programs. So the one I have in my XPL video, which I will link to in the description below this uh, video, I will link both to my um, to my XPL compiler video, as well as to my um, music video. And there's one more video I wanted to link to, but I don't remember. But um, I've not looked at COBOL and MTS. Okay, so here's the, some uh, tips how to get this to work. Um, let's see if there's a hello world in COBOL. Hello world in COBOL. Let's try to get this to work. Okay, so um, we said it's create global. Copy source global. So we do the first thing. Then program ID then empty then what is this asterisk environment division we do the configuration division section I remember this stuff when I did a little bit of COBOL programming in the early 80s. Okay, object computer is the same. Then an empty line, data division. Let's do the file section. Then an empty line. Then the procedure division, this is where the code is. Um, an empty line again, the main logic section. So much typing in COBOL. Um, begin, display, 
Hello YouTube Moshix channel line 15 position 10 then stop run main logic exit exit and what was the command again um, Uh, what is it? End file, yeah. Okay, so list global. Okay, so let's go back and see how to compile this bad boy. Uh, um, run global u. Let's see this all in caps. Run global u as cards, which is kind of the parameter or the input, or sysn uh, global. Compiling. We're using very few resources here. <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Uh, should not begin a margin. Hmm. So basically, it's a formatting problem. Uh, list global. Uh, yeah, it needs to be all moved one to the right. And I'm sure the editor on MTS has a command to move everything over by one byte because uh, the first one will be for comments. But um, I don't know how to do that. But I think we played with it enough. Uh, I think you can see that it is very resource um uh, efficient and um this this does work fine so uh, let's see how to shut down i think he said there was something about how to shut it down um wasn't there shut down yeah first you need to stop the enter okay so let's shut down here uh, sign off. Okay. Good. So we got we're out of this. So now we're gonna be shutting down by doing the commands that he's telling us, which is dollar hold no dollar hold x and then brain system mm -hmm. then shut down all okay Shutdown complete, MTS. Now we go here, stop all, quit. Okay, so we got this uh, to work. Um, I think this was uh, interesting. As you can see, uh, the MTS world is not yet very well organized, but it does look like a very interesting system. There's a good COBOL compiler tons of other compilers. I missed the PL1 compiler, uh, no basic compiler and no C compiler, but it looks like a very capable system and people who work on MTS, they swear by it. And uh, uh, most people uh, 
still miss the old environment. Uh, it's kind of like being from the old country where everything was better. Um, but uh, so that's it. This worked and I don't want to make this video any longer than it already is. Uh, sorry for all the tribulations at the beginning to get this uh, up and running. But uh, it's uh, I would say that this is just because the MTS world is not as organized, but we got it to work and uh, this was interesting. Please um, subscribe to the Moshix channel for more interesting videos that I have coming up in the next uh, few days as soon as I get back from Europe. And, uh, and um, I wish you a great day. Thank you very much for watching. Bye-bye.